So I am joined by Dr. Thomas Weiss, who's our director of the mission, IOM mission in Ukraine, who will tell us a bit more about what the plans are for the upcoming winter, um, for the many thousands of people who are displaced in East Ukraine, other things that are happening in the country. Welcome very much, Dr. Weiss, and uh, tell us what, what's IOM doing right now in, in Thank Ukraine. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the ongoing conflict in the eastern part of Ukraine and IOM's response. Uh, conflict started, as you certainly know, about three and a half years ago, end of uh, middle of 2014. Uh, so we will enter its fourth year as of April, May in 2018. Uh, currently, uh, thanks to uh, IOM's DTM, which is called differently in Ukraine, it's the National Monitoring Mechanism, we have uh, counted or we are counting about 1.6 million internally displaced persons. Uh, continues to be a highly protracted conflict uh, uh, affecting, affecting essentially elderly people. This is one of the characteristics of the conflict in Ukraine is that more than 60% uh, of all the vulnerable people affected by the ongoing conflict are elderly people above the age of uh, 65. This is the highest proportion of elderly people affected by any conflict worldwide. Uh, and IOM is one of the um, first-line respondents in the provision of, uh, of, uh, of support related to hygiene kits, uh, related to the provision of, uh, of non-food item support, uh, uh, related to the provision of coal, uh, coal for winterization. Uh, we have had last week in, in uh, ECA, in the Eastern Conflict Area, the first distribution of, of coal. Uh, it's a program funded by uh, PRM as well as the, the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, supporting 3,800 households with three tons of coal uh, each. Uh, um, and we hope to be able to finish the distribution before the end of this year actually. And we had a very interesting, very nice encounter um, last week when I went down to Donetsk with our first beneficiary of this year's uh, coal distribution, an uh, elderly lady, uh, 80, 84. Uh, she has been working as a primary school teacher for 40 years. Uh, very sweet old lady uh, with her um, house uh, close to the contact line. She has been telling us about the daily shelling and about how difficult, obviously, it has been for her to uh, adapt to the situation. Uh, so we, uh, we, we came with a lorry. Uh, distributed the coal, uh, put it in front of her house basically, and then some neighbors were coming with shovels in order to help her. Uh, then she was telling us, uh, you know, um, I'm so happy about this coal now, um, I think I will have to live a little bit longer in order to really make good use of the coal that you have just distributed to me, uh, you know. Uh, and indeed, uh, now with uh, winter at the doorstep, uh, temperatures are, um, are below zero. Uh, there's snow, there's ice, uh, it gets up to minus 20 in the, in the high days of, uh, of winter, sometimes in, in January and February. Uh, coal the, is an essential part of our life-saving humanitarian support to those very vulnerable people affected by the ongoing conflict. Uh, um, and it's, it's extremely useful because uh, obviously many Many, many partners have limitations in terms of their work there, in terms of access to, to affected populations. Uh, uh, authorities are um, uh, having very limited capabilities, capacities, finances in order to support their people. Uh, so IOM is, uh, is one of the, uh, the first line respondents, uh, together with a handful of other, other players like uh, the Red Cross, uh, UNHCR, and a few international NGO players actually. Uh, we are also uh, focusing on uh, supporting uh, some of the local host communities with uh, interventions in the area of uh, social cohesion. Uh, psychosocial support is extremely important to help people uh, cope and at one point of time overcome the, uh, all the trauma that they uh, have experienced uh, because of the prolonged exposure to uh, very often dramatic and traumatic experiences. Uh, um, we also work a lot uh, in the area of the provision of uh, emergency livelihoods and trying to help those most deeply affected by the ongoing crisis uh, to uh, regain some uh, material, material um, autonomy uh, 
falling back materially on their feet uh, through the creation of opportunities for income, making them also less dependent upon international support. Uh, um, uh, we have activities also focusing on um, host communities in terms of the rehabilitation of uh, social infrastructure. Um, one of the overarching ideas here is to create an environment, a platform, um, spaces where uh, representatives of the IDP communities would be getting together with representatives of local host communities, entering into dialogue, um, sharing experiences, sometimes doing things together. Uh, we have a very interesting um, uh, project funded by, by Social Cohesion in libraries, uh, in public libraries, for instance, in, in quite a number of different um, towns and villages in the so-called uh, government-controlled areas, uh, um, where we organize um, master classes in Japanese arts and culture, calligraphy, origami, and other, other crafts that help people to focus on something different mm -hmm. than uh, the impact of the conflict. And uh, um, through this, uh, entering into dialogue, sympathizing with each other, and creating a different type of atmosphere that would be conducive to, to, to building bridges between local host communities and representatives of, uh, of, of IDP, uh, uh, IDP communities. And we have always received good feedback from our beneficiaries, from the local host communities, uh, who find these, uh, these types of activities extremely useful, mm. so helping them to overcome their, their trauma and, uh, and helping them to, to focus on something yeah. else than, than um, um, yeah, the daily routines and trying to cope with the difficult environment that they're exposed to. Exactly. Exposed to. No, I think it's fascinating. So you're, you're, you're building already, sort of getting communities ready for, for peace and for, for post-conflict, even in the midst of a conflict that, that's raging every day. We don't hear much about yeah. it. It's still going on, but now we've heard some more about it. So thank you very much for filling us in and best of luck with your work and to all your, your staff uh, all over the country who are doing an amazing job for IMM. Thank you, Dr. Weiss. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.